Nice! Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to create an animation yourself. I'm using the pro version of Canva because it let me choose for more images, but you can also use the free version. You will just have a fewer options. I start by creating a new design and I choose 1080 x 1080. If you need to make a video as an animation, I recommend using video dimensions. You always start with a blank canvas. I immediately go to the elements section and search for a background I want to use for my animation. Most animations are cartoons, so I search for a shopping store cartoon. Because I want to make a background with a store. You have to search carefully, I do that too, it's not like I find everything right away, so yeah. I choose this image and then I enlarge it and it's important to lock the image in place. So you click on this lock button. Now I use the element search again. I search for a car that matches the background and it's fading to one side. I also want to share a tip with you. Look for a graphic image that you can change the color of. As you can see, I found an image with a car and a girl inside that perfectly matches the background and looks like a cartoon character. You can fully customize this image according to your taste. I choose red and a yellow t-shirt, or the car is red and I choose yellow for the t-shirt. If you're creating a story for children, I recommend using vivid colors. So choose colors that are familiar to children. Most importantly, choose images that face to the right. I hope someone understands what I mean. But children still think very simply, and most of us read from left to right, which is also how we tend to look. Now I want to add a cool graphic image logo and text to this animation. I'm going to choose the McDonald's logo, which I think everyone knows, especially children, and you can find this logo too on Google by searching for the McDonald's logo and then using a PNG image because then the logo is already transparent and you don't have to adjust it. I did this already and that is the reason it's in my saving folder. I make the logo smaller and then I place it where I want it. Then I select text in the left sidebar or you can simply press the letter T on your keyboard to add text. That works too. I choose to add a subheading Although it doesn't really matter which text option you pick, I type in McDonald's in here, this box, and then I select a font. I took some time to find a suitable uh, font that goes well with this image, but I will save you the time. I choose the font Fredoka, although I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I think it suits my animation. I give the text a bright red color, and then I place it where I want it yeah, to be. Then I select text again because I want to add another text box, so I choose the same font and then I write open in it. You start just with the letter O and then hit enter and then the next letter will be P and hit enter again for the other letters. And then you get this text that goes from bottom to top. Then I select uppercase to make the letters in all caps lock and it's important to align the text properly and also use the Canva spacing button for this. In this way you will get the effect of the letters being nicely spaced. I make this letter text white as you can see and now you have your animation. Ok, the animation is not moving yet but I will explain that now. I didn't show you this on screen but I made sure to lock the McDonald's logo and the text so that nothing else can happen to them. Then I select the car and I move it a bit off screen. I make sure that the bumper and headlights still stick out a bit and then I click on animation and select the B icon. I want the image to move in a straight line. To achieve this you need to hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then move the image out of view. So I slide the image all the way to the right and make it off the screen. When you play the animation it quickly moves out of view as you can see and you need to adjust the playback speed and click on smooth and then you will see that the animation moves much better. To get this timeline bar you need to select your canvas and then do the right click with your mouse and then you will see show timing. Click on that and then you will get this bar. Click then on duration and then click on this function. It's super handy because then you can see your timeline bar much better. Since I want the animation to move, 
I also want to make a piece of text move and that is the text open. So first I make sure my timeline is visible. I copy the text open and then shorten the duration of this text to 0.7 seconds long. Next I paste the text I previously copied onto my canvas and I select the open text and placing it on the same text layer as the first one. Then I shift my timeline bar. You should keep about a 0.5 seconds uh, to 1 seconds gap. And then I paste the open text again and slice this text over the rest of the text layers. And again, I shorten the text. And you have to repeat this step each time, but you need to ensure that, that there, there is a gap. And then you shift your timeline bar and paste your text again. To understand this process, you really need to pay close attention to the timeline bar. I hope that someone understands this. If you have any questions, please ask. When you play the animation now, you will see that besides the car is moving, the text also blinks. Now we are almost done. We are going to apply sound effects. So you click on uploads and then you click on audio. And I've already added a sound by clicking upload files to add an audio effect. You have to make sure it's an mp3 file, otherwise you won't be able to use the sound as an audio. Then I drag my file into the audio box. I found this sound effect on Pixabay, which is a free stock website where you can find a lot of material for your videos such as sound effects. Then I make sure to expand my terminal bar again so I can see my timeline bar better. When you play the sound effect, you will hear now that it works. But we are going to apply one more important thing and that's the beginning and the end sound effect that you need to hear. This effect will make a big difference. You do the right click with your mouse on the sound effect timeline bar and then you will see audio effects which you open and then you adjust the fade in knob which is the beginning of the video and the fade out knob which is the end of the video. These are the settings that I used and if you play it right now you will notice and hear a big difference. You can hear that the sound effect matches the animation better because I've made it a sound effect fade out as the car disappears from view. If you want to save your animation, simply click on share in the top right corner and select download. Choose the file type, I'm choosing an mp4 video and then you can choose between two quality options. If you keep it as it is, which is free for everyone, or slide the toggle to the crown icon, which is only free for pro users. I slide it towards the crown icon because I know it will slightly improve the video quality. I hope this information was helpful to someone. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give this video a like and consider subscribing.